Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Anshul Singh, Assistant Professor in the Department of Anesthesiology at University College of Medical Sciences and GTB Hospital. I am going to deliver a talk on monitoring of a COVID patient on oxygen therapy, detection of signs of impending respiratory failure, as well as oxygen conservation, conservation strategies that are available. Most important parameter measured to monitor a COVID patient on oxygen therapy is oxygen saturation. And the other parameters that are included are blood pressure, pulse rate, and ECG, as well as arterial blood gas sampling that helps us detect the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. As you can see it's here, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in blood as well as the pH. Now talking about peripheral oxygen saturation, it is one of the most simple, non-invasive and easy to comprehend parameter that can be measured in a COVID patient. It denotes the proportion of hemoglobin molecules that are fully saturated with oxygen and it has become the corner store of monitoring during the COVID era. The reason for the same is for the simple reason that COVID patients they demonstrate happy hypoxia, that is they fail to demonstrate the signs of respiratory distress by increasing respiratory rate or labor bleeding in response to severe hypoxia levels also. So saturation, morning oxygen saturation helps us in detecting these dangerous level of hypoxia promptly this is also useful in pre-hospital monitoring of COVID-19 patients and helps in decision-making for hospital admission. In case these patients, they develop hypoxia. So these are the types of the pulse oximeters commonly available. Portable pulse oximeter is mostly used during the home management of COVID-19 patients. Various sites. For application of pulse oximeter includes the fingers and toes, which are the most commonly used. The less common ones are the earlobes and the nose tip. Now, how do we detect that the oxygen saturation reading that our pulse oximeter is showing is reliable? Well, it depends on the waveform that is present. It should have a regular waveform. In this video recording, you can see there's this irregular waveform. So this oxygen saturation that the monitors denoting is not accurate. Whereas coming to this video, so in this video, we can see there is this regular waveform that is present and therefore the oxygen saturation reading that this monitor is depicting is fairly accurate and therefore the detection of a regular waveform is very important in uh, measuring the oxygen saturation in patients. Sorry. Now what are the pitfalls that are associated with measuring oxygen saturation? one needs to be mindful in order to properly use it. First, the improper placement of pulse oximeter will lead to inaccurate readings. Amongst the other causes of inaccurate readings can be placement of pulse oximeter in cold extremities. Then in a patient who has developed hypotension or has hypovolemia or is shivering. In these patients also, the oxygen saturation reading will be fairly inaccurate. Also, when the saturation levels are persistently below 90%, below this value, the oxygen saturation is not a good indicator of the level of oxygenation. So in this scenario comes the role of partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood. <clears throat> 
it is detected by performing an arterial blood gas analysis by doing a radial artery sampling usually one thing important is that while measuring the abg we need to enter the fraction oxygen concentration correctly since the fio2 influences the pf ratio which is one of the parameters which i will be discussing subsequently however the pitfalls associated with the use of po2 is that it since it's an invasive technique it helps only in intermittent measurements of the oxygenation levels this slide actually shows the normal as well as the morning warning values of the peripheral oxygen saturation in a normal patient whereas uh, oxygen uh, 95 to 100% is the value of the spo2 the values uh, in a severe covid patient typically lie below 90% whereas in a moderate covid patient it is in the range of 90 to 93% coming to po2 the normal value is around 80 to 100 mm mercury in severe hypoxia it is typically found below 60 mm of mercury and in mild hypoxia it fluctuates between 61 to 80 mm of mercury about pso2 it is between 35 to 45 mm of mercury and uh, in a healthy individual with values more than 45 mm of mercury it needs immediate attention and it has a sign of co2 retention now coming on to pf ratio what is pf ratio it is a ratio of partial pressure of oxygen to fractional concentration of oxygen If the normal value is 400 to 500, and values below 100, they are suggestive of severe ARDS associated with COVID-19 pneumonia. And values between 200 to 300 are uh, uh, suggestive of mild forms of ARDS. Another parameter that is used nowadays uh, in management of COVID patients is SF ratio. That is the ratio of the oxygen saturation to fractional oxygen concentration. this is the formula that is used now sf ratio of around 235 corresponds to uh, pf ratio of 200 and therefore sf ratio below 235 denotes a case of moderate to severe ards other parameters that are used are pulse rate ecg and respiratory rate these are the normal values uh, as you can see so these parameters they are also used in the detection of response to therapy in response to oxygen therapy pulse rate usually tends to stabilize and fall uh, as compared to uh, before the oxygen therapy started the respiratory rate also reduces and falls to below 25 per minute and the patient also becomes more comfortable uh in response to oxygen therapy so these are the other measures that can be used to assess the effect of oxygen therapy on our patient and the improved level of oxygenation are denoted now how do we identify a patient in respiratory distress or impending failure a patient who is in impending failure shows a uh, typical signs such as recruitment of accessory muscles of respiration like uh, sternocleidomastoid these patients they show rapid shallow breathing their respiratory pattern has very short inspiration and a long expiratory phase they show typical seesaw respirations in which there is chest retraction and abdominal expansion during inspiration as the hypoxia grows more profound these patients they tend to become disoriented anxiety and develop anxiety restlessness with altered mental status these patients they eventually uh, become unconscious or agitated and this is the time when you should call for help and uh, take immediate steps to correct the oxygen levels this is the video of a patient who is in respiratory distress as you can see the respiratory rate is increased and the patient is using her accessory muscles the sternocleidomastoid typically in this patient after we put the patient on bipap ventilator the respiratory rate stabilized and the accessory muscles became degrecruited now coming to the last part of my talk is oxygen conservation techniques and why we prepared for them now the most important aspect of oxygen conservation technique is strict titration of oxygen therapy why is oxygen conservation techniques important is because oxygen is a drug 
It should be used only as much as needed and only for as long as needed. It has its own detrimental effect, uh, as we know. So therefore, it is very important to titrate oxygen in all the patients uh, whenever possible. It is also important for efficient utilization during a surge of COVID-19 cases, as we saw in the previous waves of COVID-19 pandemic. So enumerating the oxygen conservation strategies, the most important is, as I've already mentioned, precise titration of the oxygen flows in the patients. This can be used by frequent de-escalation attempts in which we try to taper the oxygen flow in the patient and see how the patient is responding to it. Also by checking the pressure in the pipeline as well as the cylinders from time to time. This is also important to check the pressure of the backup cylinders from time to time. It is also very important to judiciously use high flow nasal cannula, which is a device used in severe COVID patients, and it typically uses oxygen flow in the rate of 30 to 60 liters per minute. It's also equally essential to close all the flow meters once they are not in use. We need to check for oxygen leakage from time to time in all the uh, machines present in our ICUs. It's also very important to practice conservative oxygen saturation targets like 92 to 95% in COVID patients and not the conventional targets of more than 96%. It's also important to use an oxygen face mask or a surgical mask over high flow nasal cannula, which will help us to use nasal cannula as a reservoir and therefore reduce the flows that are required to use the nasal cannula. Therefore, I, was con I will conclude my talk by uh, conveying this take-home message. Accurate monitoring of oxygen saturation and knowledge of correct usage is the cornerstone in the detection of hypoxia. Oxygen saturations below 90% is an alarming sign and therefore you should call for help. Oxygen is a drug. It should be titrated whenever possible and should be used only as long as needed. Routine implementation of oxygen conservation techniques will help during the times of unprecedented oxygen demand. Thank you for your kind attention.